Hello and welcome to the Football Revolution. I'm your host, Gio. Great to have your company. No A-League men's action. The current top four in the women's all stumbled with the finish line in sight. The Socceroos win, plus plenty of Euro 2024 and international friendlies action. And here to share the load is my co-host, VIG. Hello, mate. How are you enjoying being back at work after 10 weeks on uh, paternity leave? Good evening. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't had a great weekend. Um, got, got done in football, uh, woke up Sunday morning with COVID. Uh, not in the office today, so just struggling a bit. So yeah, just hasn't hasn't been a hasn't been a good couple of days for for the girls back. Mate, bad luck comes in three. So did you remember your passwords at least when you when you got back in after ten weeks? Did you know what your passwords were? I did. I had to uh, scratch around for them though. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, hopefully uh, your week gets a little bit better and uh, you get over COVID and uh, the family gets back to health so you can start having more pool parties and uh, and doing fun things again. But. Uh, Mate, lots happened in football this week. So Canberra United is back in the A-League women's finals race after a points deduction is overturned on appeal. So we said a few weeks ago in our What the Foot that uh, they beat Sydney 2-1, but unfortunately they had uh, done something illegal with their substitution. So I think they'd made substitutions on four occasions rather than the three. So they hadn't gone over the number of substitutions, but you're only allowed to do it on three occasions throughout the game. But uh, the tribunal decided that it was absolute rubbish and they had no uh, right to take the points off Canberra. So deservedly, they're back in the race, which not only helps them with their push for a final spot, but it affects Sydney uh, trying to wrap up the Premier's plate. Yeah, definitely. All, all aboard the uh, Canberra United Express, hey? They're, they're back in the hunt. Um, I think what they've won three of their last five, so they're absolutely flying. Um, got their points back we spoke about it um a couple of weeks back saying it was just an absolute joke it's it's not their fault that um they subbed on a player after after making five subs um already or using their their three allocated slots or something like that so um yeah look they they're in red hot form and and beware victory uh and melbourne city who they they're hot on the heels of yeah, we'll touch on that a little bit later in our uh a-League women's wrap, but uh, in the last round of the women's A-League this weekend with four teams fighting for the two remaining final spots. But before that, Adelaide United play Wellington tomorrow and Sydney FC host Perth on Wednesday. Both teams are desperate for the three points. Yeah, big big clashes. Um, you know, all, all teams looking for looking for three points there to, um, you know, get get back in the mix. Um, it's going to be interesting and obviously a few, a few teams are missing international players as well. Yeah, look, that makes that a little bit harder, but uh, no excuses, right? If you want to play finals of football, you put yourself through the ringer and you uh, you cross every bridge that uh, comes your way and just no excuses, you just get the job done. The Socceroos defeated Ecuador 3-1 with goals from Irvine, Mabil and Qual. Aidan O'Neill was rewarded with a starting spot. Alex Robertson, Barello, Qual and Tilio get t- game time as impactors. Uh, game two is tomorrow in Melbourne with Arnold expected to make changes, including a forced one via uh, Harry Suter, who is out injured. Yeah, look, pr- impressive performance, to be honest. I thought they played really well. Um, they harassed Ecuador. I don't know if Ecuador were just out here for a holiday, but they were, uh, some of their players were smoking cigars and um, <laughs> a couple of our goals were, were questionable, but how good's football without VAR? The ball goes in the back of the net, the uh, the ref blows the whistle and, and it's a goal and you move on and, and you keep playing. So, um, yeah, look, it's it, the crowd for me was probably the, the, the disappointing factor from the match. Um, 20,000. Yeah, 18, 20,000, um, you know, on a Socceroos return home from a World Cup with all the momentum. Um, you know, I think I think Sydney fans disrespect the Socceroos a, a little bit too much um, and they, they should be getting behind the, the national team on, on events like this when they do come back. And um, for me, that was a, a disappointing factor. I know ticket prices were, were pretty expensive. It was also at Parramatta, uh, not, at, not at Allianz in, in the city. So um, a few factors surrounding that, but... Um, and, and there were two MPL games on on Friday night as well. Um, I think one out at Mount Druid and, and one at Valentine Sports Park as well. So both in Sydney's West, and uh, people out there watching those fixtures as well. So um, scheduling isn't great. I, th- I think uh, Football New South Wales and Football Australia need to collaborate a bit better uh, with their with their match scheduling. Um, and to be honest, I expected a, a better crowd and a bigger crowd out there to support the Socceroos. Mate, when you were saying that uh, you think they were here for a holiday, smoking cigars and having a great time, I'm surprised I didn't see photos of them poolside at your place uh, living things up. Is is that is there something I, I don't know here? Am I missing something? Well, the boys come around for a few cheeky ones the night before. Don't worry. <laughs> Mate, uh, game two uh, tomorrow. So are you expecting, would you expect a bigger crowd considering it's in Melbourne who do get behind uh, the Socceroos more as well as the performance they put in in game one? Yeah, I think so. And I think the Melbourne crowd will probably be out to prove a point, um, having the A-League Grand Final taken away from them potentially um, this season. Melbourne City could could potentially be 
you know, finish first and, and earn the right to to host that final, um, like what they've what they've done in previous years. So, um, yeah, I think the Melbourne crowd will will rally behind the Socceroos. It is at uh, Marvel Stadium and, and not at Amy Park, so um, I don't think they'll quite get a sellout. But I'm hoping for a bigger crowd and a uh, bigger better turnout. Get your superhero gear on and head out to Marvel Stadium. Uh, so, is there? Tell us a player or two that you're hoping that he brings in tomorrow. So, I know everyone, the whole of the nation's hoping that Irakunda gets a bit of game time, but uh, it's exciting to hear that uh, even though Suit is out, but it looks like that uh, Riley McGree will come in after his amazing form that he's been in at uh, at Middlesbrough at the moment. Is there anyone else that you're hoping that uh, gets a bit of game time? Yeah, look, I think I think Jordan Boss probably deserves some game time at, at left back. Um, you know, he's he's been picked in the squad. He's come in, um, didn't play. Uh, up in Sydney, so he's back in his hometown in Melbourne. Um, Aziz has played full ninety, so um, I'm hoping he he potentially gets the start and and you know can go out there and, and prove himself on on the international stage. Mate, what did you think of just before we move on? What did you think of uh, Alex Robertson getting in there and showing that he's not out of his depth? And like I said, he's you know he's mixed with the big boys in City, so playing against Ecuador is not much of a stretch for him. And all of a sudden he gets in a bit of a scuffle, and in comes the big man uh, Harry Suter and holds his bloke at arm's length and says, "Look, you know you got to get past me before you get to the debutant." Yeah, look, it's good to show passion on the football pitch, and um, you know he's got to, he's got to be careful he doesn't cross the line. But um, when when you do get a little bit fired up like that, you know he thought he probably had a penalty. I know Arnie was on the sideline screaming for a penalty, and then so were the bench. So, um, you know he's, he's reacted. I think he got a little uh, little scruff on the scruff on the hair and got up and and uh, you know got in the uh, Ecuador player's face. And in comes big Harry Suda to protect his uh, little brother. So um, good to, good to see the boys getting around him. And um, there's no better way to um, you know win the crowd of uh, Australian football fans than um, you know getting a bit of a scuffle and uh, show your pride. Mate, we're a bit, I think Ecuador are a bit excited that they see the back of Suta for game two. But uh, speaking of the national team, Graham Arnold wants more A-League games to produce better players. Agree or not agree? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, look, look at the championship, League One, League Two in England. They play 45, 46 games a season. So um, a plus cup games and, and League Cup games. So, you know, some teams are playing uh, above 50 to, to 60 games a season and, and our A-League boys are playing in a shorter season. Um, you know, what are they playing? About 30 games a, a year. So. Um, I think there needs to be more football, whether that means, you know, w- with the expansion, if that's the plan, hopefully we get to 16 teams, we play a, a home and away, um, that gets us up to, to what, 30, that's, you know, still only 30 games. I think we still need, I think we still need more, to be honest, or we, we play home and away and then a bit more, you know, we see leagues in, in Denmark and, and Greece and, and those, you know, a bit lesser leagues in Europe, uh, they split off into a Champions League round and, and a relegation uh, round. So, um, maybe we need to bring the, the second division in, get promotion, relegation, and away we go. But it's it's easy said and done. But uh, we spoke about last week at length um, with these two expansion teams. We you know we can't foresee relegation happening anytime soon in, in the next couple of years, especially. Let's back Arnie then and uh, let's get more games on. Let's get more teams in and promotion relegation. Okay, it's a problem that we can park for another day. But uh, look, let's at least get a second tier competition and more teams in our uh, in the A League. 160k for AVM update. Superhuman Bulls physio Brendan BMW Wyatt's upcoming coming run on the 15th of April to raise money for Brain Foundation Australia. BMW is still smashing out the kilometres. I don't know how he's got this in his legs. I reckon he must be spending as much time on the physio table as the players at Macarthur that he treats week in week out. I think he he must really have his put his body through the ring and he'll deserve a nice holiday after this. But uh, thankfully, it's been a lot cooler last week, so uh, a little bit easier on the body and a little bit easier on the on the on him in general. So far, he has raised nearly 5700 but we're le- with less than three weeks, you still have time to help by going to the mycause.com.au link we have set up on our Direct Me page to donate. The run from Avalon Beach to Wollongong is open to everyone to join and support this great man and amazing cause. Uh, I'll be catching up with him this week to see how he is and make sure he's still in one piece and uh, just to give him a little bit more encouragement, not that he needs it. The guy's got a mind of steel, so uh, he doesn't need that, but it'd be great to see him and just see how everything's going. But uh, I'll have more on BMW's progress next week. Yeah, mate, you have to uh, get him in the ice bath and give him a nice massage when you see him. Mate, he's the absolute freak of nature. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just hoping he can get through this, get some good money for the uh, foundation, and then he can put his feet up and have a bit of a break before he finds his next crazy adventure. But uh, PL News, there's no games with the international break, but there was a little bit of uh, headline, a few headlines that I wanted to touch on with you. So my mighty Tottenham Hotspurs and West Ham coming to Perth in July, which is fantastic, especially uh, in, a, in a year where we're hosting the Women's World Cup. To have two big uh, teams come out from the Premier League again is very exciting. Hopefully they bring their first teams and not their third teams. 
Yeah, look, it's it's always a bit iffy when it's the end of the season, but you know these players now are getting paid mega bucks, and uh, the clubs are, are demanding a lot for from them. So um, hopefully, we see a, a full squad come out and and a new Tottenham coach as well. Yeah, I was going to say, mate, Conte bids a Riverdeci to Spurs after his outburst, a Stellini in charge until the end of the season, and every free man and his dog are uh, being linked with the job. So Nagelsmann is open to talks after being sacked by Bayern Munich and replaced by Thomas Tuchel. So I, I think the only person that hasn't been nominated at the moment is me. I think I'm the only person that yeah, hasn't been nominated oh, because I'm too oh, biased. Oh, I'm no chance too because I played like an absolute Conte on the weekend. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm off the list, unfortunately. Mate, speaking of old coaches, Hodson was reappointed as Palace boss until the end of the current campaign. He's the oldest manager manager of all time, turning 75 this year. I told you last week I thought it was ridiculous they got rid of uh, their current coach. Smart move or just uh, better the devil you know? Oh, God, honestly, he's got he's got a Zimba frame, doesn't he, Roy Hodgson? <laughs> Seriously, like, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a... Uh, I think it's a bit of a shotgun move um, to, you know, stick with what you know and, and bring him back. But, um, yeah, look, good luck to him. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have much to say about it, to be honest. I, I, yeah, we'll, we'll see if it's, a, if it's a good move by the end of the season. Mate, he's done amazing things in uh, English football with how long he's, his longevity and also he's had good success. But let's be honest, they've never set the world on fire with the type of football they've played. So keep bringing back the same guy. What do you expect? That's the ultimate uh, insanity, isn't it, right? Keep bringing the same Things guy the back, same different results. So, look, we wish him all the best. And, uh, you know, if you're a Palace fan, you're hoping he can work his miracles again and uh, celebrate his 75th birthday by uh, keeping Palace in the Premier League. But as you said, time will tell. Uh, match officials issued with guidance ahead of the holy period of Ramadan. Uh, encouraged to find a natural pause in play to let these players to take on liquids, energy gels, or supplements. Tough, yeah, sure. tough putting your body through the ringer, right? When you're when you're not eating during the day, and then you get a little little time at night. So to to make make it uh, not only you know bearable for them, but also not to endanger themselves because they're not not being able to take in enough or taking any food during the days is a, is a really great move and should be applauded by the uh, the Premier League. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a smart move and and the right move. And you know, you try go a full day without eating and then playing a, a ninety minute football match. Um, you know, I don't think you'll fare too well. So, um, you know, it's it's the world we live in these days. And um, you know, hats off to the Premier League for for doing this. And I think all leagues around the world should do this at, at every level of football because um, you know we've had an extremely hot summer here and um, we're lucky this week it's it's cooled down a little bit. But um, you know, if you don't eat all day, you need you need to fuel your body to to be able to perform at a, at a good level. So um, hats off to them. Yeah, absolute class act from them. Player escape room, we are locked and reloaded with Western Sydney Wanderers star defender Tommy Mercella joining us for a chat. We wrap up match day 19 of the A-League women's competition. No revolutionised roundup this week with no men's games, but we'll be back bigger and better than uh, better next week. Is there anything I didn't see, VIG? Yeah, I don't know if you if you saw this, but the MLS uh, continued to play this week, and um, Jordan Morris of Seattle scored four goals in a in a four one win, and uh, the assists all came from from the one player as well, Leo Chu. So uh, a little bit of a combo up front for them, and, and the boys had a day out against uh, Sporting Kansas City. So yeah, ready to go. Surely they uh, dinner was they didn't pay for any dinner or drinks that that night. Those two players. Oh, hundred percent. Surely the boys the boys took him out, shouted him everything and anything, pretty much. Mate, Charlie Austin would have been sitting there watching, going, and where are those guys when I need them? We, I score four, I score four and get a point. These guys score four and get a four-one win. So uh, that would have been something else for him to whinge about. But uh, yeah, fantastic effort there from both those players. A League Women's Wrap: Newcastle Jets three-two home win, fighting back after trailing two-one in their first victory in five matches, and in the process they condemned the Wellington Phoenix to the wooden spoon in their first season. They are much improved, but uh, not improved enough to be able to avoid the uh, the last place position. Uh, Miller Vojevic with a clinical double as Canberra United stun Western United 3-0 in Melbourne. The win leaving them with a chance of playing finals football and hurting their opponents' hopes of beating Sydney in the Premier's plate race. The defending Premier Sydney FC turn up the heat on league leaders Western United with a comfortable 3-0 win over Adelaide at Cogra. The three points leave Destiny in the Sky Blues' hands. Simple equation, two wins in their remaining fixtures this week and their back-to-back Premiers. The Brisbane roar on the road frustrates Melbourne victory with a goal for both teams in the first half, but none in the second, leaving the full-time score locked at 1-1. It was a positive point for the roar, but could have been fatal. It could have fatal con- consequences for victory, who are in a battle with three other teams for the remaining two spots to be decided this week. And Perth Glory's gutsy 4-3 win at Macedonia Park extends Melbourne City's poor end-of-season form with only one win in six matches. The win gave the glory a mathematical chance of sneaking into the top four, possibly at the expense of Melbourne City. 
Yeah, some big movements. Um, obviously, Canberra, the big winners of the weekend, 3 0 win over, over Western United, who are at the top of the league. Um, you know, they, they've got momentum now. They've got their points back after um, the, the decision was overturned. So uh, they've, they've got momentum now. They're, they're, they're a steam train. They're heading towards the finals and, and they've got pressure on Victory and, and, and City, who are slipped up. Victory with a one all draw um, and, and City with another loss to Perth Glory. So, um, like you said, Sydney was still with a chance to, to go uh, Premiers again. Um, and, you know, to, to jump Western United. But, um, yeah, it's all it's all about Canberra United at the moment. And, and you know, let's see if they can uh, make it all the way to the finals. So the uh, quick quick look at the table. So Western United on 36, Sydney FC on 34, but with two games to play, Melbourne City on 29, Melbourne Victory on 28. And then uh, sitting just outside is Canberra United on 28, as well as Perth Glory on 25 with two games. So let me ask you, VIG, so who do you tip to be the Premiers? So Western United obviously are on 36, Sydney FC are in second after their slip-up, uh, you know, that well, after losing those three points that they had been given. So they're now sitting two points behind Western United. Do you see Sydney winning both games and Western United winning their game and so Sydney win? Or do you see uh, Sydney slipping up here and Western United uh, get, getting the victory they need to take home their first ever uh, Premiers plate? Yeah, look, I think Sydney have uh, Perth Glory – and then okay. Newcastle, and Newcastle Jets, yeah. Uh, look, I, I can see them winning both those games and and go on top of the league. Um, and I think Western United are just starting to to feel it at the back end of the season now, and uh, they're, they're they're hitting a few stumbling blocks. So I wouldn't be surprised if Sydney win their two games, go go top of the league, um, and Western finish second. And I wouldn't be surprised if Canberra sneak in uh, above uh, Victory or Melbourne City. I was going to say to you, um, who do you think make it, make the top four? So you've got obviously uh, Western United, Sydney, who are home and hosed. But then uh, with Melbourne City slipping up last week, you've got the possibility now that uh, City, Victory, Canberra United and Perth can all make it. So, uh, you know, you've got uh, City play Canberra. So it's a it's a it's basically one or the other on, uh, on the weekend. You've also then got Victory who are playing away to the Wellington Phoenix and then Perth play Sydney as well as uh, the Brisbane Roar. So... Uh, who do you like to make the uh, make up the rest of the four? Yeah, look, it's going to come down to that Melbourne City uh, Canberra United game. I think um, I'm going to write uh, Perth off. Um, I think uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go. I think United Canberra United got momentum. I think they might pit victory. Oh, pit, they'll beat Melbourne City. Sorry, and and jump into the uh, into the four. Okay, so yeah, look, I, I'm looking at it here too, and I think uh, that obviously the two huge games are. Perth, if Perth uh, can do the job on Sydney, that would greatly help Western United and also, I think, increase their chances of going through because I think they'll take care of the Raw on the weekend. So, And the other one, obviously, is City versus Canberra and Canberra in red-hot form and, and City, as we said, they were awesome early on in the season, but they're starting to really die at the back end. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there, but if they do sneak into the finals at the moment, uh, they're going to limp in at best. So, uh, yeah, look, a very interesting round of games, uh, not only, like I said, on the on the weekend, but there's two, two midweek games as well. My weekly rap has been replaced by a shout-out dedicating a weekly song to a team or a player for their good or bad performance. This week's shout-out goes to a man who has been in excellent form for club and country, scoring again for the Socceroos in their 3-1 win against Ecuador, St. Pauli's red-hot midfielder Jackson Irvine. Uh, he's taken his game to another level, scoring a brace in his last league game, taking his season tally to seven goals in Bundesliga 2, and has been one of Graham Arnold's most re reliable in recent times. So the song we send to you is over Larceny's edgy track, Another Level. like that one too, I think. Um, yeah, he's on fire at the moment it's for, for club and country. Um, he, he's almost first name on the team sheet for, for both at, at the moment, and he's scoring goals galore in the, in the Bundesliga too. Um, and, and captaining that side as well on, on the occasion. So um, he, he's, a, he's a real leader and he's a leader in the Socceroos to, uh, team as well, um, player that you can really rely on and count on, um, you know, week in, week out, and, and every time he puts on that, that green and gold jersey. I tell you, you are the stats man of all time. So tell us at the moment, I know you said that his team was in uh, relegation trouble before he went to the uh, the World Cup with the Socceroos, but uh, since then, not only has he been scoring goals for fun and Connor Metcalf has been ripping up the league as well. So it's been a, a really good move for him to move from City to uh, join his Socceroos teammate uh, over there in, in uh, Germany. But uh, where are they sitting at the moment? Are they any chance of uh, promotion? I'll tell you what, they've gone from a relegation zone up to fifth spot. So... Um... 
they're still eight points behind uh, Hamburg, who are sitting uh, in third on 49 points. So they're sitting on 41, but they're, they're gaining momentum. And I think, what are they now? Seven or eight games unbeaten. So um, a, a great uh, return after the, the extended Christmas break for them. Yeah, look, it'd be amazing if we could get another uh, soccer player back into uh, into the top one of the top leagues and his form at the moment. It's not just keeping him in a spot in the team; it's basically he's carrying his team. So he's uh, he's been doing fantastic. So we wish him all the best, uh, not only in the game tomorrow night for the Socceroos, but uh, on his return back to um, the Bundesliga too. We hope you enjoy the track. Uh, I'll tag him in and, and let him know that, uh, like I said, you know, like all football fans at the moment in Australia, we love having him in the side. We love watching him. And I don't know if you saw this, but I'm guessing you would, considering you're a big, um, a big Man United fan. Did you see when he met uh, Casemiro and he basically it was like watching you and I go and meet Michael Jordan or you know David Beckham or Messi or someone? It was like it was just really funny to watch another big name footballer see someone who's even bigger and freak out. I did. He was like a little kid, wasn't he? His jaw hit the ground and. Um, it was it was a bit shocked, but um, yeah, it's it, like it's good to see. You know, he, he's playing at a decent level in in Germany, but you know, Casemiro is he's playing for you know arguably the biggest club in the world, and you know he's he's been to World Cups uh, numerous times, uh, won Champions League, won La Liga, uh, you know, now winning trophies in England. So um, goes to show that you know every even players um, you know that are playing at a at a lesser level um, than others have uh, have fans. All right, that's uh, that's the end of that. So we wish him all the best, uh, Jackson Irvine. But uh, A-League men's table, I know we uh, there's been no movement this week, but just a quick update for the listeners. So Melbourne City still on 41, uh, top of the pops, played one less game. Adelaide United, who are in fantastic form, uh, in second on 37. Three points, one win back in third is the, the Wanderers. Uh, they clash this weekend, which we'll talk a little bit, a little bit about uh, in our uh, clinical finish. So that's a huge game this weekend, uh, second versus third. Back in fourth, we've got uh, Central Coast Mariners in 31 who need to find their mojo again. Wellington Phoenix uh, also on 31 in fifth. And uh, the good news is that uh, their star striker, Oscar Zawada, had his uh, little baby boy, uh, I think it was last night. So um, hopefully, if he's not back this week, he'll be back soon because they desperately need him back uh, back firing and scoring goals from him. But uh, congratulations to him and his wife, and uh, we wish him all the best. And uh, in six at the moment and hanging on to the side of the cliff, they've run out of gas, their petrol light's on, but they're somehow still sitting uh, sitting in the vehicle, is Sydney FC on 27. Yeah, uh, congrats to Oscar Zawada. And uh, I think Ufak Tale's already uh, signed his son to a, a long-term contract. So I would too, uh, mate. Keep, keep it in the family because uh, I know there's there's plenty of goals in him as well. Absolute pedigree, and you would think that uh, maybe some of the uh, opposition teams have had something to do with it. It seems like a, you know, he's been out now for about two weeks. I think he took the time off, so the little fella took his time coming. Maybe uh, they got, one of the opposition teams gave a false alarm deliberately so that they could uh, didn't have to face the, uh, the the deadly striker. Yeah, potentially if I was the opposition, I'll be I'll be doing everything I could to. Uh, I'll be telling his missus, hey, make sure you have another one, quick, smart, because uh, we don't want to play him again next season. So. Um, yeah, look, interesting. There's there's a lot of good games this weekend. Uh, Western Western Sydney and Adelaide United, obviously the big one. Um, so looking forward to that. All right. Up after the break, we welcome to the player escape room a man enjoying an outstanding season and giving plenty of strikers nightmares. Western Sydney Wanderers enforcer Tommy Merciler joins us after the break. We'll speak to you then. You're listening to the Football Revolution. Joining us now in the player escape room is a man who has added plenty of steel and calmness to his team's defence. Please welcome to the show Western Sydney Wanderers towering defender, Tommy Masella. How are you, mate? How's things? Good, mate. Thank you for having me. Nice to be here. Mate, it's great to have you on. And like I said, you're one of the form players, not only defenders, but one of the form players in the A-League. With the international break, there was no A-League men's games. Did Coach Rudin give you the weekend off? Not really, to be honest. I... I didn't help myself with a red card before the international break, so I had to do some extras. But it's always good to get some hard work in because it was a little bit of busy schedule, you know, games recover, games recover. So it's good to have time to get some training in, to get the fitness a little bit up, and now we're ready for, for the next block of games. Well, the good news was the weather was rubbish, so it's not like the weekend before where you could have gone to the beach or taken the family out. It was horrible, so it wasn't too bad to be uh, to be doing training. And and talking of your red cards, so you've been in the thick of the action the past few weeks. Uh, Enkololo was sent off for his wrestling-like move on you, and then unfortunately uh, you were sent off the following week for bringing down David Williams. Was it punishment enough missing the derby even though you crushed Sydney, or have the boys been giving you a hard time? 
No, no, the, I enjoyed the game. Obviously, it was a, at, at the beginning a huge disappointment for me because I played every single minute this season and, you know, you don't want to miss games like, like Sydney Derby. But that's football, you know, sometimes it happens and it took me a few days to kind of get out of that negativity a little bit. But then I focused on giving some advices to players to, who jumped in and to just keep the positivity in the change room and help the team uh, from the stands and I mean as I said I enjoyed the the game they they really demonstrated the high quality in that game and they were dominant and everything's better when you win a Sydney derby in and around the club so I enjoyed it too yeah I was going to say what was your job but uh, I didn't didn't expect any less of you to be giving advice to the young guys but it also helps that uh, even though you got sent off the following week you win a derby so I think maybe it slipped under the carpet but uh Mate, the season's been going very well for you. You're currently sitting in third, three points behind Adelaide United, who you're welcome to Combank Stadium on Friday. So this is a huge game and very important in the race for a top two finish. Um, how's the week been and uh, are you guys ready to roll? Yeah, 100%. As I said, the, the derby always gives you a little bit of, uh, lifts your confidence a little bit. And we had a high confidence already. But after the Perth, Perth Glory game, we had to make another statement and we've done that in the derby and you know Adelaide we respect them they are I think on a 10 games unbeaten the second the three points in front of us so we know what we have to do in that game we know their strengths we also know their weaknesses so we had time to to recover to refresh after the Sydney derby which is not just physical but also emotionally it drains you up a little bit so we're now fresh we're ready we started today with a little bit of tactic work and we'll be ready for for Friday night yeah, look, you guys are genuine title contenders, I, I believe, as well as Adelaide, So, and, and both in excellent form. So it should be a cracking game on Friday night. You have the best defence. You've only conceded 18 goals in 21 games. Now, I know if you're a midfielder or a striker, you're not so worried about it. But when you're a defender or a goalkeeper, it's something that's huge for you guys. Was that something that you set as a target this year to have the best defence? Because best defences win leagues usually. 100%. That was one of our first goals, you know, when we, we say in the meeting room together as a team and we put up, set up some goals before the season. That was one of the first goals that we put to be the best defensive team in the league. And, you know, we were we were fighting with a couple of teams at the beginning. You know, Brisbane Raw had a good defense at the start and Melbourne City. Now they copped a bit of goals and we're now there in a comfortable position. And as you said, the def- defense wins championships and we're happy that we're keeping that tight uh, at the back. And, you know, now last few weeks, the attack is proving that they have a lot of quality and now we're scoring goals and it's much easier for us also to defend. Yeah, very exciting for Wanderers fans. Mate, without getting you in trouble, and you can pass if you like on this one, but without getting you in trouble, how has Marco Rudin been this week after the performance his charges produced in the derby, especially after the run-in that he had with former teammate Koreka, the last outing, and also being a former Sky Blue? Has he been the Cheshire cap from Alice in Wonderland, or should I say Marco in Wonderland? <laughs> no, he was pretty calm, you know. He... <laughs> I think we we didn't get too much carried away with that game. You know, we we knew, like I felt after the second derby, what that we lost one nil with one man down. We were dominant in that game also, and we really gave them a hard time. And they were sitting back with the uh, with one man more. They were sitting back uh, in the defense and just waiting for the for the final whistle. So I felt that we're much better team than them. Do you expect to win a 4-0 in a derby? Not really, but, you know, that night everything went our way and we were really ruthless and we we enjoyed that game, but, you know, he he made it clear that it was expected from us to win that game, that he knows that we we should win those type of games and that Adelaide is going to be a much, much bigger challenge for us. So, you know, we're ready for that. Mate, uh, it's been a very busy few years for you in your career playing in Croatia, South Korea, Perth, India, and now in Sydney. What convinced you to come back to the A-League? Surely something like this derbies, because in Perth you didn't have these derbies, but uh, here this derby is fantastic. And if we could get every game to be of this standard, everyone would be coming to the league. Yeah, true. Like, yeah, I was a little bit, after after going out, out of Perth glory, uh, I was probably seven, eight months or even more without the club. So I had to... Had to go to India to accept the offer there and to get myself going again. And India wasn't like really a amazing experience with COVID and the club wasn't on high standards. So once I got a call from the boss to help him uh, last year to to try to get the team into the top six, uh, I straight away said, yes, I want to come and get myself back to 
to elite level, you know, to for me, A League is a high quality league where you have to be fully professional if you want to survive. So they gave me a chance to come back, and you know, I decided to really go all in this year with uh, with the preseason, with the off season, and and I'm enjoying it. And as you said, derbies like this, you know, I, I like the passion in the club. The fans are a bit different than the rest of, of the league. You know, the more I feel, the more a little bit like like back in Croatia, back home, where I'm used to watching, you know, Hajduk split and their fans. Yeah. A little bit crazy, but positive, you know. So I like that. I like that passion and I like the expectations and the pressure that comes with that. So it's really enjoyable to be part of the Wanderers. I think everyone's a little bit crazy and uh, it's it's great to have support like that because it, it basically gets you across the line when you are struggling. Mate, a lot has happened since we last had you on the show in 2019, but nothing more important than being being the birth of your son, Lionel. Uh, how's life now with a two-year-old and will he follow in his father's footsteps? Does he have your height? Uh, he's he's pretty big for a two-year-old, so <laughs> <laughs> I think he will. And uh, yeah, it's it's been amazing. You know, it changes, it changes your your view of life also and like it's much easier to come obviously this year we we're, we're doing good in the league so I'm coming back home mostly happy from games and all that but sometimes when you have a tough day in the office and maybe you lose a game or as I got a red card a few weeks ago when you come home and you see him it's much easier to to digest all of that and you know you you can get your head up out of football a little bit so it's really important, you know, the family time and, uh, you know, you can relax your mind a little bit and he's helping me with that and it's a full-time job also at home, but, yeah, it's been amazing. It's great to see. But, uh, mate, you've passed that with flying colours. Are you ready to play one of the first two games I like to play with my guests? It's called uh, Six Aside, where we'll compare you and your Wanderers teammates. Let's try. All right. First question, who is m- more likely to offer to drop off one of the young lads home or help pick up the gear, you or Adama Traore? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm always trying to help. Adama is probably the kindest and most nicest uh, person in the club. So I would go. You with really? Adama. I never would have yeah. guessed that. I, yeah, I just... me too. When I when I was playing against him and all that, but yeah, he's sometimes too nice. Okay, I normally try and match these up to make them pretty fair, so it's not a one sided and it makes it tough. But uh, I, I thought you'd definitely say you. But okay, there, there you go, Adama Trey. Yeah, all right, likely one. to help out. Yeah. <laughs> and considering you're a generous guy too, it's it's a big call. But uh, all right, who is the better roommate, you or Callum Neuenhoff? Oh, well, I'm I'm pretty simple, you know. Just get get through the dinner meeting and go to the room and sleep as soon as possible. But Callum, you can't hear him; <laughs> he's really quiet. So I think he's he's also a good one to have around, you know. So who's that? Who's your current roommate when on away trips? My current is Milos Milos Ninkus. Okay, nice. And what about uh, who's Callum uh, teamed up with? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. Okay, you can't even – he doesn't tell you. He doesn't talk enough, so you don't know. Who <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who would make the better Hollywood actor, you or Brandon Borello? Ah, uh, Brandon, 100%. He's what always – What around. sort of film would he be in? Who, who, would, who would you compare him to? Uh, I'm not sure. Some action movie for sure. Yeah. Or, or even a comedy. Okay. He's a fun guy to be around. He is? Okay. Yeah. He's always laughing. He's always trying to do something around, you know, around the around the dressing room. So yeah, mate, that's why we have this show because of the fact that when you watch him, especially in the last few derbies, he looks like the crankiest man on the planet. Right? He looks like he's angry and upset. But you're telling me now he's he's a lot of fun and joy. So that's why we try and show this uh, different side of the football is because you know I know different, but a, a lot of the listeners out there don't know. You'd look at him at the derby and you think, oh, I don't want to hang out with that guy. <laughs> no, no, he's he's a funny guy, really positive. Like I, I'm enjoying my time with Brendan this year, really top professional, top person, and I'm really happy for him. You know that he's getting the reward, not just in the team but with the Socceroos also. Yeah, oh, he's been sensational since he came back from Germany, and and he, he'd have to go close to being the, the player of the uh, the season. But uh, time will only tell with that. Who takes longer in the shower, you or your uh, center center back pairing, Mar- Captain Marcello? Uh, me, me. I like a long shower, and Marcelo is always in a rush to to go play golf. So is he really? <laughs> is he a good golfer? <laughs> nothing, nothing after shower that we have to be around the club. He's already on the golf course, and pretty good, I've heard. Okay, no worries. Who has the better sense of humor, you or goalkeeper Lawrence Thomas? Oh, Loza, Loza, Loza is one of the funniest guys in the in the locker room, and you wouldn't tell that he's what twenty nine, thirty. He he's like a child sometimes. 
That's good, mate. You're used to that with your son. So uh, that's <laughs> another kid to, to be able to entertain in the change rooms. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And who is more likely to pick up the bill? So if you go out on a team, I know, breakfast or lunch or something and someone had to pick up the whole bill for everyone, you or Oli Bazanic? That's a trouble question. If I if I say me, it's going to look bad by now. No, it won't look bad at all, mate. If you want, if it's you, just say you. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm, I will take it, yeah, 100%. But okay. I don't think Oli wouldn't also. Okay, well, you both would. Tell me this then. Who would run away then? Is there somebody there that when the bill comes, he uh, goes and takes a phone call or he's going to move his car or something? Is there someone? Who all might... the young boys. If, if we're on a team dinner, all the young boys will do it. <laughs> all right, they'll all run from you. That, that's understandable. All right, mate, and a bonus one. Tell us one thing you know you are much better at than a teammate. So, you know, you came there last year and, and straight away you made a huge difference in what was happening, but uh, you would have obviously been looking around as well to see, you know, who, who's who in the zoo. Is there one thing that you knew as soon as you walked in that you're better at than a teammate? Uh, look, punctual or more dedicated or harder working or look I always I think for myself that I'm really a hard worker and de- dedicated and I love football I love watch it a lot watch on TV and I think you can improve a lot through through watching it also on TV but I don't know telling saying like when you see the boss and he's really you know high demanding and sometimes ruthless and you know he can criticize you a lot I think I'm pretty good with dealing with that and I don't take it too much, you know, personally, which some players can can sometimes feel like they are criticised, uh, you know, not like on purpose or they're getting picked up always. So I think I'm pretty good in that, you know, just putting the emotions on side and having a clean mind, you know. Nice, mate. That's also good to have that skill when you have an argument with the wife. Yeah, no, it's a little bit harder, but it's 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 a very good skill to have. But uh, that's fantastic. All right, mate. Moving on to the uh, the second game that I like to play my guests, which is called One Two. I'll give you a few topics, and you just tell me uh, your thoughts on it. You ready to go? Yep. Milos Ninkovic, your roommate. Uh, magic. Yeah, he's a legend, isn't he? Absolute yeah. legend. The touch of that he has, I I didn't see not as in a league, but in my career, yeah. Yeah, one he, of I, I, I just, you know, if, if I was a Sydney fan, I would have been crying. The second that I saw him walk out the door and go to the to the uh, the, the biggest rivals, I would have been crying. But uh, he's he's proven again that the, the assist that he put in against Sydney just goes to show he's still got it right and he's uh, an unbelievable player. Amazing. He's really important for us. You know, even though he's 38, he, he still makes a difference on the pitch just by him being on the pitch, you know, changes the view of the other, other team, you know, the... They focus on him a lot and he just, he's so smart in finding those little pockets, you know, of space between the lines and, yeah, opens up the game for us. Uh, you must be liked at the club because for them to give you Milos as your roommate, they must uh, be a big fan of you. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, to be honest, we click straight away, you know, we live in the same neighbourhood and we go together on training from the same area, same mentality, so it was a good match. Well, it's a good move. You're sitting currently in third, almost uh, in second spot, and Sydney's struggling to get into the sixth. So it was a good move for him and Callum uh, this year. But uh, your cooking skills? Uh, terrible. You know, good. Yeah, my wife really wants me to to try and improve there, but I'm a little bit lazy when it comes for cooking. And I can do simple things like eggs and pasta and stuff like that, but I don't think I can go on to cook something and impress, impress my wife. I don't think I'm on that level yet. Mate, even more important though, if she went out for the night with the girlfriends or visit family or something, who's going to cook for Lionel? What's going on there? <laughs> he's going to get a bit skinnier. He's going to be <laughs> like his dad, skinny. Yeah, okay. So uh, what, what, would, what would happen then? Are we, are we getting takeout or we, how, how, are we, how are we countering that? Uh, knowing my wife, she would probably, you know, prepare a lot of food to uh, freeze it for us just to, you know, quickly put it on a, you know, boil it or something. But, yeah, take away. We'll improvise a little bit. Maybe um, he will cook for me. Who knows? I, I was going to say, I'm glad she's got a backup plan because, yeah, he needs it. He needs it. Marco Rudin, the gaffer. Uh, personality, big personality, I think, like, uh, demands a lot and, you know, uh, gives a lot and ex- expects a lot. I think I would describe him like that. You know, he, he really gives his everything for the club, for the players, but he also expects us to give back to to the club balls and to him, you know, to be what's dedicated. It like, what's it like, uh, Tommy, having a coach who is not only obviously passionate and, and very into the players and the club, but that was a centre, a centre-back himself? 
you know, I always see that as a blessing, you know, to to have somebody. And he played on a good level, on a high level. Um, he was a champion in Australia, a captain, leader. I had uh, previously Popovic also in Perth Glory as a centre back. Hayden Fox as his uh, assistant. Now I have here, you know, the boss and coaching staff. I have Adam Griffith. So it's good to know. And plus Marcelo with a huge career behind him. I see that as a as a blessing for myself, and I think. I improved a lot with them, you know, with the boss and with Marcelo. Just those small details that, that can make a difference. And I think I improved there this year. And for me, it's a blessing every day to, and I try to get as, mu- as much as I can from them. Do you think he's a little bit harsher on you and Marcelo because uh, he was a centre back or he's, he's the same with everybody? Oh, he, he, he really like, he is harsh on us, you know, on me especially. He always wants perfection. And, and for me, that's, that's perfect, you know, you, I try to put my expectations even higher for myself than, than he does because that's the only way I'm going to match his expectations, you know. So so he really wants us to be the best defense in the league and, you know, he, he's hard on us and he expects a, a lot from us because we have the experience to do that. So is silverware this year, is that the not negotiable? Is that the minimum that you guys will accept? 100%, yeah. Bare minimum. I- I was getting that feeling with with everything that's happening at the club and how much you know things are going great there. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fine line there, right? Between there's uh, there's first and first, right? There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah, obviously, you know when you see where the the club was for the last six seven years, and I came here middle part of the last year, and we didn't make the top six. We didn't even make the the FA Cup, FFA Cup. So uh, it's a big already achievement that we're here where we are now this late stage of the of the season with a lot of new players and it all gelled in pretty pretty good. But we want more. You know, we have players that won leagues around Europe, around the world and they want to add to their trophy cabinet, you know, so it's it's good to be part of this thing. Exciting times for the Wanderers. Mate, your dancing ability. Ah uh, when I'm drunk, it's good. <laughs> oh, if it's not, if it's not, who, uh, who, a little who's bit a worse stiff. dancer than you? Who's a wor- just hang out with them? If you've got a worse dancer, just hang around with them, and they'll make you look good. Yeah, of course. I think Milos is bad dancer. I think uh, Callum wouldn't go good. Also, there. <laughs> Does your so, wife try and get you on the dance floor occasionally? Yeah, yeah, she wants always. Let's go somewhere. You know, if if we have a free weekend, if she wants to go somewhere where we can dance. But I'm trying to. Avoid that. You know, I say I have a little bit of knee problem or ankle stiffness, sore hamstring or something. I always find something. Mate, I reckon in the off-season you're going to get home and find out you've been booked into cooking classes and dance lessons, but uh, yeah, good luck I'm with that one. I'm expecting that. <laughs> All right. Celebrity crush. It can be uh, a footballer. It can be uh, an actress, actor. Celebrity crush. To be honest, uh, not really. You know, I can't say I, I was always – focus on football so I had my idols you know as a as a footballer in Croatia I always loved how Josh Imanic played and I'm trying to have that style of of game that calmness composure in in difficult moments so he was somebody I was really looking up closely and I had the privilege to play uh two three two three games against him when he was in Dinamo Zaga when he was that was his I think last year of professional football so yeah He's one of the guys that I really looked up to from in Europe, in world football. I loved uh, how Piquet played in those best years of, of, of Barcelona and I enjoyed his game. So, yeah, but not really like I, I never really had some celebrity crushes or something like that. No, I never, I never expect, you're too tough for that. I never expected yeah. a celebrity crush or any posters on your wall. <laughs> <laughs> Remembering special occasions, i.e. birthdays or anniversaries. Are you good? Uh, Pretty bad, to be honest. Yeah, it's not not good to say, but pretty bad. I always, always have to. My brother is good at reminding me for my mom's birthday or dad's or something. He sends me a message and says, "Mom's birthday today." And I'm just like, "Thank you, cheers, mate." I have a I have a cousin that I'm really close with, and I think last five six years I forgot forgot his uh, birthday, and his birthday goes. I'm like, it's difficult. It's twenty first of June, and. He's like, what do you mean? Twenty first of June, it's it's in Europe, first day of summer. How can you forget that? You know, first day of summer. So every time he waits until midnight, uh, Australia, Australian time, to tell me thank you very much for forgetting me again. I'm like, mate, is your son's birthday in December? Uh, no, no, thirtieth of October. I remember his 
I remember his. I, I was going to say, I was just testing you out there. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, well, look, well, the 30 October, we'll just have to give you a reminder there, but even more, it's so important, uh, you know, you have to let me off air when your wife's is so I can make sure that uh, we have you all ready to go so that you don't uh, to blow, blow your lines on that one. Yeah, 100%. The thing that makes you laugh the most? Uh, right now, my son, to be honest. He, every day he comes with, especially now since he started daycare, he comes out with something new and you just get shocked how smart kids can be. You know, he surprises you with every day with something and if he makes me smile like throughout the day. So I would say him. No, it's a little bit harder for for your son, but my son's uh, 12, but he's smarter and tall, almost taller than me. So uh, I think it'll be a little while before your son's taller than you, but uh, the way they are heading, it's, uh, it's it's hard for us to keep up, but uh, they do give you amazing experiences and as hard a work as they are, they're the best thing you'll ever get in your life. So um, yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Something that you always wanted to do but never have tried yet. I want to. I want to do the how you call it the, with the parachute jump from the plane. Okay. Yeah. I want to do that, but um, I had a teammate in Perth, uh, Juande yep. from Adelaide. He's really uh, he likes uh, adventurous things and you know trying uh, new things. And we were close to doing it in Perth one time together, but I have to admit I kind of find a reason not to do it that that day but yeah that's definitely something that i want to try mate he's one day is the biggest uh no-no in a-league because uh when i had harry van der Sarg on he told me he was going to go uh swimming with sharks with one day as well and it's like yeah. i'm hoping it's no day not one day it's a no day because you guys are going to get yourselves in all sorts of trouble so as i said to harry i think uh, after we have this interview will be added in your contract next year uh no extreme sports no diving no swimming with sharks and the like one is amazing yeah with him it's never boring also it's, it's similar to brendan but he's gets out of the club and he always does something with the family and he always wants to do something new, something exciting. And yeah, I love him. Yeah. All right. And what motivates you to work hard? Well, just like right now, as I'm a family guy and I think my son, my wife motivates me most, you know, to, to give them a, a nice life to, to, to secure our, like, uh, give them a stable life, you know, enjoyable life. And that motivates me to work harder to, to get better in the job and to to last longer in, in the work I do. So yeah, the family is the biggest motivation. My sense is the plan to stay uh, at Combank Stadium and get the uh, some more silverware for the Wanderers. Yeah, you don't you never know. Football is a bit unpredictable, but yeah, I have another year after this one, and I'm happy here. I always say that I'm happy with the people around me. They believe in me. They. They really give me a lot of confidence, especially the boss, you know, and the chairman and the Eddie Boss now also, you know, so the teammates, I'm really enjoying it. You know, you can't, it's not easy to find a club and the teammates and the people around the club that can uh, make you happy, you know. There's always some things that you're not happy with here. In one of those, there's no such thing like that. I'm really happy with everything. I'll let you in a little secret too. It's not easy to find defenders that can come in and uh, change your back line and make them from going, you know, copying a lot of goals to being uh, rock tight at the back. So let me tell you, that they'll, they'll be just as keen to extend your, your contract as you are to stay there. But, mate, uh, I know you're a busy man and I know there's a huge game this Friday against uh, Adelaide, so we wish you all the best. Uh, we wish you all the best with the family. I'll, I'll make sure I'm in touch when there's birthdays and anniversaries. And, uh, mate, if you need any cooking tips or anything like that, uh, feel free to hit me up. I'm not a bad cook myself. But, uh we really appreciate your time on the Football Revolution and we wish you all the best uh, with your running to the finals and uh, we'll check in with you a little bit later in the year. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Cheers, mate. You're listening to the Football Revolution. Welcome back to the show. It was great chatting with Tommy, a wonderful role model who is having an outstanding season and we wish him all the best for the remainder of the season. So now it's our uh, clinical finish, our final segment of the show. So the first up, as usual, is our WTF, a what the foot. Take your pick, VIG, from the Shock Euro 2024 results. So you got three choices here, or maybe you want to throw one of your own in. So Sweden at home being thumped 3-0 by Belgium. France wiping the floor 4-0 against the embarrassing Netherlands at the Stade de France. Or football minnows Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan ranked 115, scoring three goals in the last 16 minutes to stun top 20 ranked team Denmark 3-2. Oh, it's tough. When you look at that, you probably think the Netherlands, but uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, Kazakhstan beating uh, beating Denmark, scoring three goals in, in what, what did you say, 16 minutes? 
Yeah, I think it was a penalty and then uh, – Borat, Borat up top. <laughs> yeah, I just can't believe it. And you know what? There's no, there's no getting away from that. It doesn't matter how well you've done as the Denmark coach or a top 20 ranked uh, – FIFA top 20 ranked team uh, coach. If you get done by a team like that who is really not a firepower of uh, football, I don't know if you ever lose that. Uh, that yeah. And it's all right if you get done by one goal, you know, it's a, it's a jammy goal, but they've got three goals in 16 minutes. So after leading to uh, nil, that's what the foot after, after leading to nil. <laughs> I don't know. Did, did the players, did they go home at, at, at half time or something? I don't, I don't know. What's happened? I'm not sure, but, uh, they look, they, they, they think they've won one and lost one in Kazakhstan, but, uh, look for them. Amazing. I don't know. Is that probably the biggest victory they've ever had by far and away? The lot, the greatest result in, uh, Kazakhstan football history. Yes. It's very nice. <laughs> mate so uh all right so we were gonna run with that but yeah it could have been any of those and i think there was plenty of other things uh what the foot i i could have rehashed the uh the uh three points that canberra had lost because like i said i don't know why in the first place when they had no authority to do it they did it but uh yeah just with euro 24 results uh 2024 results there was just uh too many from there so we know the flops who impressed you the most in the qualifiers so far uh, I think England have been good. Um, you know, uh, rub that in, mate. Yeah, uh, I think they have. You know, Harry Kane up top scoring goals, breaking the England record. He goes above uh, Wayne Rooney now. Um, what happened? What's know, happened to my to, mighty Italians? Honestly, we went yeah. from winning a a Euros, uh, yeah, the previous Euros, to now we just can't. We just we're it's, horrible. It's a double dagger for you because you got Harry Kane scoring goals in yeah. in, in Naples. I um, mean, a tough stadium to play at. Um, you know, so they, they go take the victory there. Then they beat Ukraine 2 0 uh, back at Wembley. So I think they've been really impressive. Uh, France, are obviously impressive against uh, the Netherlands. Absolutely um, pumped them 4 0, I think it was in the end. So, hey, um, thanks for pointing out the obvious VIG, but this is what, what my dilemma is. It's a bit more even detailed than that is the fact that Harry Kane can't score against the Italians in Milan for us to win and beat them in the Champions League. But then he'll come back out and play for the national team and score goals against the Italians to stuff me up. The second time so Mate, it's just absolutely wrong there's so many layers to this story isn't there and and they're all they're all going against you i don't know what's what's happening i don't know what what uh harry kane's got against you you know you're a loyal spurs fan you've loved him for years but uh, what's going to happen when he signs for man united next season as well i don't know the good news is i don't have covid so at least not all bad <laughs> for me this week so at least I've, at least i've dodged you got one up on me i may not have dodged any good football results but uh, I've, i have dodged all of those but i haven't dodged uh, i've dodged covid but mate another quick question i had for you so your thoughts on the host not being in the qualifying now i understand that they don't need to be in qualifying because they are the hosts of a tournament whether it be the world cup or a euro but is it dis- is it a disadvantage for them because at least in qualifying right you're rock hard battle hardened you're playing qualifying games here you play all these glorified friends you're playing teams that you know kind of don't have any games or are looking for a game or you know I, I don't know is is that the greatest preparation i know germany's a powerhouse but uh germany haven't fared the best in their last few major tournaments is it a massive di- when you're a team that's horrible right so no disrespect but when you get tar you're just happy to make it right it doesn't matter how you get in whether you fell out the sky whether you got given bonus points you know you're the host or whatever but when you're a team like germany who normally make all these tournaments is it a disadvantage going in underdone yeah, potentially, but I think Germany will just count themselves lucky that they are the hosts and they have qualified without having to go through qualifiers. Because, like you said, they've been terrible in tournaments the last the last couple um, couple of years, and um, you know maybe they would have stumbled at, at qualifying this year because they haven't been great. So they they can uh, count their lucky stars that they are hosting and and they do qualify. But yeah, like like you said, I think it is a bit of a disadvantage because you're not playing um, you know match match football that that means something to you. So um, it, it's it's very difficult, but it also gives them a bit of a chance now. I think to refresh their team, um, get a few younger players in. They they had a few you know old boys still still lurking around, but I, I think they need a, a clean out and they need to uh, start fresh and and, and look at um, the Euros in twenty twenty four with that. Maybe uh, Italy and the Netherlands and Denmark will be looking and going. If we host, we'll qualify, right? So maybe there'll be a lot of the people trying to host the next one or the next World Cup or something because they know, realize then, hey, we used to be guaranteed of playing and getting a holiday and a travel in this. Hey, now we're not guaranteed of nothing. I'll tell you what, Greece will be putting their hand up because that's the only way they're going to qualify for anything at the moment if they if they host the tournament. Mate, one last thing before we move on to the games to watch this week. What do you think of Morocco beating Brazil again? I know it was a friendly, but I tell you what, they're starting to really uh, become a fan favourite of a neutral fan, right? Yeah, I know it was a friendly, but they are. They're a good football team. And, you know, you don't make a, a semi-final of a World Cup um, if you're a pushover. And 
they've uh, they've got a coach who's got them well structured. They they haven't conceded many goals. Um, you know, I think they they didn't concede a goal until that semi final um, against who was it France? I think so. Um, you know, they they're, they're set up set up really well. They've got some some really good talented players, and um, you know they're the they're the uh, the word on the street in Africa at the moment. Oh, they're fantastic to watch. And uh, just a quick uh, mention of uh, the Belgium obviously got off to a great start. So a great start for their for their new coach who's taken over from uh, good old Martinez. But uh, games to watch this week, as I said, a critical clash when the third place Wanderers welcome second place Adelaide United, three points separating the two teams. And the result is important in the race for the uh, very important top two finish. Sydney FC needs to steady the ship against Western United after two straight losses. And Melbourne City host the Jets. A win for the home team would put them one step closer to the Premier's plate, and a loss would help Newcastle push to push Newcastle's push to play finals football. Yeah, some interesting fixtures. Obviously, the the Friday night one uh, is the biggest with the Wanderers and and Adelaide. Um, you know, you, what a game. you'd like to think it's a big game and a big game uh, in, in the season. And and if you want a home uh, semi final, then um, you know it comes down to this match pretty much. So. Uh, the Wanderers at home will be will be looking to to get the three points, and and Adelaide um, could probably sneak away with the draw. But knowing Adelaide and the way they play, though, they'll be going for all three. Who would you be putting your money on? Oh, it's they're, they're the two informed teams of, of the league. Um, I'll, I'm going to say Western Sydney at home. Um, you know, a few of the Adelaide boys coming back from international duty, also Borello, but um, at, at home, I'm going to go with Western Sydney. Okay. So, uh, yeah, look, a lot to play for this week. I think uh, there's other games. Obviously, the Mariners need to start to steady the ship. I think MacArthur Bulls even somehow are still hanging in there. So if they could get a result and uh, Sydney and uh, the Jets fall over, then somehow they'd be in calculations as well. So lots to play for. Our TFR fantasy update. So there was no games this week, but uh, current totals are I'm on 1704. UVIG, my friend, are on 1688. You're on a four-week winning streak since your season low 44. So too many fours there, but you've closed the gap to 16. So hopefully that number means that it's over for you. Four weeks streak, four times four is 16, which is the current gap. 44 was your low score when you uh, started your four-week run. So I'm hoping here now with my math- mathematics that uh, this is end for you and I'll be back in form this week. You put the curse on me, but I'm I'm in hot form, <laughs> aren't I? But um, yeah, I think... Did you realise that you've been on a four four four-week winning streak? No, I didn't actually. So thanks for reminding me. It made, made me feel a bit better. I think there's been three centuries in there too. So, look, if you look at it from a positive side for me, I've been going horrible, but I must have been going good before that because you still haven't caught me. <laughs> yeah, you, you, were fly, you were flying. I, I was a bit in a bit of a form slot, but I've, uh, I've hit a purple patch. And, um, you know, it's not how you start the season. It's how you finish it. I agree. But if anyone's crying out for um, new dad, uh, Oscar Zawada, to come back, it's me because he's been my captain the last few weeks. Uh, good old uh, Cummings has been hot and cold. One week he gets me a, a massive score, the next week he's uh, he's at your pool party, so uh, and gets me nothing. So uh, and same with Matty Miller, he's one week a, a fifteen or sixteen, next week he's minus four. So I, look, I just can't wait to get him back. But uh, before we move on, I have twelve trades left. How many have you got up your sleeve? Because this could uh, come into play towards the end of uh, the season when we, when you start losing players with injuries or guys who can't back up after being away with international duty. Yeah, I've got twenty two trades left. Trades left. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've got, got a few up my sleeve, but I, I reward consistency. So if you're playing well and you're getting points, then you stay in the team. If, if you hit a form slump, you're out. So uh, is this um, a G up? 44, 22, four times four, 16. Is this just, are you just playing numbers games? Just to confuse me here so I get dizzy and fall asleep. Don't call me a stats man for nothing, but we're, we're ready to go. It's going to be a, a big end to the season, but uh, I've got a few trades up my sleeve. So, um, my players better watch out if they don't perform this, uh, this weekend. Mate, I'm just, I just got to bounce back this week. Hopefully, like I said, uh, if you do win a, a record five weeks in a row, I just got to make sure that the gap is less than 16. So I uh, hold on for another week because eventually I have to turn this ship around. But uh, all right, interesting times ahead in uh, TFR Fantasy. If you missed any part of the show or want to listen to the other episodes, where can you catch it? Yeah, they can catch us on all good podcast platforms, uh, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, uh, also up on uh, Football Nation Radio across their platforms and uh, video up on our YouTube channel. All right, the men's games return this week and it's the final round of the women's matches, as we said, so plenty of football to enjoy. Please get behind BMW and his 160 kilometer for AVM challenge with under three weeks to go, so I can't believe it. But uh, in less than three weeks' time, he'll be running this huge 160 kilometers. I don't know how he's going to get through it, but uh, if you want anyone and you want to have your money on anyone to get this job done, it's uh, Brendan Wyatt, BMW. 
Hope you enjoyed the show even half as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. We thank uh, our special guest, Tommy Merciler from uh, The Wanderers very much, and we wish him all the best against Adelaide uh, on Friday night. And we look forward to your company again next Tuesday. And as we say, until next week, rise up and join, and join the football revolution. Have a great week. We'll catch you then.